Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. If you don't mind just letting me know if you can see my screen and hear me. And that has been uh, super helpful since I've been Mr. Struggle Bus here with my uh, with my audio and video. So hopefully you're able to do that and see and hear everything that's happening. Let me just double check my screen. Yeah, we're there. Okay. Perfect. Um, and yes, uh, still not seeing any confirmation. Don't have a big group here quite yet, but if you, those of you that are here, if you could let me know, that would be helpful. Uh, I'll uh, get underway here. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. I appreciate it. You're my, you're my diehard. You're my go-to guy. I appreciate everyone that is here. Let's, uh, let's jump in to uh, market conditions. I had a, uh, I've had an amazing couple of days here. Let's talk about that and see, you know, what's changed essentially from Tuesday to Thursday. We obviously know the biggest thing that changed was the Fed and their announcement yesterday <clears throat> to keep keep rates rates the same, but forecasting three lower rates, uh, low, uh, additional rates uh, lower. We'll talk about the bond market here. Let's just jump into overall perspective. We obviously we know where we're at. We're we've had bottom of the trend. We're sitting at the uh, top of the trend. We've had uh, an Elliott wave five part uptrend typically in terms of uh, an Elliott wave study trends advance in five waves and retrace in three waves. So within this overall trend, even without that, we know that we are at the top end of the trend. The, there's several there's several components to that that we'll talk about in terms of market direction. But in terms of our indicators, we know momentum is the upper end of the range. We know that it's not extreme though. Momentum is not extreme. It's approaching that level. It doesn't have to get extreme, uh, but we have breadth that, that is extreme and sentiment, which is extreme. So we could see momentum. We'll see how strong the day closes out today. Uh, towards the upper end of that range. Uh, we also have buy sell ratio. We talked about this on Tuesday, and the but the 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 move yesterday really popped that back up, but not you know not significantly. One of the issues with the S and P 500 is that the magnificent seven, you know, the Microsofts, Apples, Netflix, um, Googles, they the, those are called the magnificent seven. They they are moving the market aggressively. So we're getting a handful of stocks that are moving the S&P. And in our database, we are tracking a lot more stocks than that. So it is going to be a little bit wider perspective of the entire market. So we definitely are seeing that we, we know two things from this. And the two most important things that we know from this are number one, we are in an uptrend. Number two, we're extended in that uptrend for a length of time. I've done this before where I draw a line approximately, this approximate distance from the from the crossover point to how long that has been moving. And when we draw that line across here and across here, every other time that that green has been above red, at least within the last year, we know that we're getting we're getting long in this trend. We can see it from the chart pattern. We can see it from uh, the buy sell ratio. We also know that when we get extended here, we that just doesn't last. Now we could get a lot more extended within this last uptrend. We haven't seen, you know, anything like this back here. Let me get rid of that and let's look at a couple of years now and see about where we're at. Let's actually go 3 years and see where we're at in relation to the last 3 years. So this is going back to December of 2020. So right after COVID, really the ra the COVID rally it was particip we were participating in here, and then it got super choppy towards the market top, and then we ended up selling off right here. This first move that we had, this actually started the downtrend. This was the beginning of the bear market, or or very close to it uh, as it was topping out around um, January, I think it was of 2021. So it was actually a little bit further back. We started to get that acceleration, but more importantly, just the distance that we're looking at on green above red. So we have this distance, this distance, this distance here, and then about right here. So we know that historically the trends don't last much longer than the, than this one has. Six, eight weeks, 10 weeks, something like that. And then we get some kind of a counter trend or retracement or just a, or a full on reversal entirely. So 
we don't want to get sucked into the FOMO right here. Yes, we're getting a real exuberant type move to the upside, which we also don't want to bet against. Um, we don't want to get aggressively bearish right here, but at the same time, that's creating a potential high reward to risk scenario for some kind of a reversal uh, for shorter term traders. For a little bit longer term, again, the, the vast majority of our portfolio time frame is dealing with a position trade about three months. So most of the time, most stocks are going to give us signals about three or four signals per year. Uh, and so each stock will go through a cycle, a trend cycle, and it will retrace. And then it may either never recover or it will bottom out, it'll bounce and it'll move higher. We'll look at some individual stocks here as well in the wheel pattern or in the uh, wheel uh, um, portfolio that we have been utilizing. So market conditions, we're at this upper end of the range. Let's look at bonds here because bonds had a huge move yesterday. Both, t both the long-term and the short-term bond. And you can see again today. So we this was yesterday and today, this is the one-year time frame. I'm looking at this right here and right here. So this was yesterday, this is today. Bonds are rallying. We've already rallied back up to this next level. And uh, again, that is, you know, we're to the upside here. So we're getting extreme really across the board, across everything. Is this gonna, is this, is this a sustainable, maintainable trend? Absolutely not, not without a retracement of some kind. It doesn't mean that it'll reverse and head back down, but what it does mean is it's gonna, it's gotta have some time to consolidate. We've now reached another level. This is another major level on TLT right here. And this is more than likely going to create some resistance at this price point on bonds. We also saw that on the short-term bond, we saw SHY, which had a real big move yesterday and it's kind of quieted down a little bit, but look what, that, look what it's running into here. It's running into this location now. And this location is going to create some resistance again. So interest rate, interest rate rally, or excuse me, interest rate sell-off, bond rally. That's what the market wants. That's what we've been waiting for. And that's great. That's, that's fantastic news that the Fed was able to get inflation where it needs to be and kind of get, you know, get out of this, this, this baloney of, um, of, of, of high interest rates. Uh, and hopefully we don't run into a situation where inflation creeps back in again, especially if next year, uh, 2024 starts, we, we see that this rate hike uh, trickled into the economy in a real negative way, meaning interest rates are too high. I know a lot of businesses really, really hurting, a lot of consumers and individuals really hurting right now because of interest rates, uh, whether that's creating unemployment in, in jobs or just creating hard, uh, making it harder to uh, get access to funds. Those are a couple of scenarios that we have uh, want to take a look at. We also just want to glance over at uh, commodities and talk about gold and oil since those are really two things. Gold had a huge rally yesterday. Let me just pull back, back into this so you can see that move here on the one year. So we're on the one year time frame on gold. Huge, huge move back up yesterday, just a retracement counter trend, which is uh, great because this pattern looks and, and should continue to be bullish going forward on gold. So keep your eye on gold, consider some of those gold stocks as they're moving higher and breaking out. The other commodity that we wanna consider is USO oil, which is having a big run up here as well. So we're seeing, we're seeing oil rally, we're at the bottom of a trend, Okay, so if we come back to signals, we know that we're in this nasty downtrend, but now we're retracing back up and testing the 67. So now we're gonna start to run into this series. So we're gonna, with oil, we're gonna stay inside of this box. This is the current zone of interest towards the bottom end of this, of this uptrend. Still an uptrend as far as this price and this price is concerned. The second it becomes a downtrend, these will switch. This will grab this high point, and then this will grab this low point, and it'll be down this direction. So if we continue to slide, it'll switch the trend. But and and the six month time frame probably has a downtrend. In fact, let's look and see. Yeah, not quite yet. So still an overall uptrend, just a real deep retracement here on uh, on oil. So a bounce here on oil as as major markets and tech and some of those things that are leading this market may start to reverse. 
we could see oil start to come back in. So that's a part of the strat, you know, part of looking for what's working in current market conditions when we go into the new buys. For example, today we've got DHC, you got some pharma that's in there. DHC has had a big run, 11%, really nice pattern here. It's a real estate investment trust, uh, healthcare. So it's, you know, re anything to do with mortgages and real estate and lending and borrowing, those stocks are, have really taken off and will probably continue to trend higher. This is a stock that's been pretty aggressive, pretty pretty volatile. It went from $1 to three in this last trend, and you can just see how quickly it can move. It was a new buy, it was the top of the new buy, so we're able to get into that this morning on the open in the portfolio in the new buy strategy because that's what we're looking for is adding into uh, stocks into that new buy strategy and let's take a look at that here on the on the portfolio so new buy strategy we've got some other stocks that have just really done really well here some of these are going you know they're up significantly and uh, looking for you know they're not going to last here up in these up in the stratosphere but they you know they'll pause correct bounce around in this upper momentum zone we'll see when you're managing these kind of uh, positions you can do a couple of things here in terms of management now one of the things in the portfolio strategy is to take let's say that we have a gain like um let's look at these three clsk so CLSK is right here, and you can see that it's 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 a little bit wider wedge than some of the rest because it's been outperforming. It's doubled, so it's taken our portfolio from our portfolio holdings from two and a half percent to four and a half percent. One of the things you can do here to rebalance is to sell back to your original two and a half percent position. Okay, now there's there's pros and cons to doing that. Number one is as this stock is working really well, it could continue to work really well, but it's now becoming a big enough holding. It's not huge, but a big enough holding that if it retraces, that's gonna create a significant drawdown. So we could sell half the position back to, rebalance it back to two and a half percent and then take all of those gains and start putting that back in, either back into cash or back into new buys so for example if i were to have sold something yesterday then that some of that cash that would have been allocated back into um where's my newest trade uh dhc right here it's already up 11 percent, but that cash then goes into a stock that is beginning a trend so we're able to exit on a stock that is ending a trend and we are reallocating that that money back into something that is beginning a trend now, we also don't want to break something that's working. So in this case, we don't necessarily want to sell the entire position, but it's a way for you to reduce the risk off of having this retrace significantly, capturing some of the gains, keeping some of the position, and then redeploying some of those gains into a stock that may be earlier in the trend. So that's one of the ways to manage winners is to take and this can be a lot bigger. You could say, okay, I'm gonna wait for it to get even higher, but a more conservative approach is to take some off the table as it, but not all of it, but redeploy it. Because at some point this trend is going to end. It may not be even close to ending. So I don't want to give up on these that are really rallying nicely. I wanna keep a hold of those. But if you look at AOII that, or AAOI that's been a big winner, oops, SSRK has also been a big winner in relation to these trends. They can certainly go higher, but we're, we're gonna see a day on some of these stocks where it's down 20% or it's down 15%. They're just volatile stocks. And so we end up with this situation here, same story. Stock has gone from this new buy within this current rally all the way to the upside. This is the biggest advantage of owning these kind of trades, these kind of stocks. They're very, they're very volatile. They can move quickly, but they're going to, they're going to start from this point. Okay, not, not all stocks that make big winners um, will come from the new buy. Okay. I should say not all new buys will become big winners, but all big winners will start in a new buy. That makes sense. We're going to have new buys that don't that don't work, but we're going to have. But if they even if they do work, they will have started right here 
at this at this price at this price point or at this at this scan this beginning point of this new buy entry so we're able to reallocate and adjust that back into something else okay so we're able to reduce and keep our risk low now this return so far this is as of september 1st on these and i think the s p is up about three or four percent so as in terms of a portfolio because that's how we want to think we, we want to think in portfolio terms not just individual stock terms because those those are fleeting those come and go and it's you know which one do we pick do we pick um, and, and do we get those kind of returns? So we're never gonna know exactly which one of these takes off, which one of these now that are really not continuing to move higher or they're early in some of these trends, like ARLO was a new buy a couple of days ago here. Is that going to be a stock that moves higher or is that, you know, is the market gonna top out and all stocks are gonna kind of pull back? We saw that in, this la in that last downturn when S&P 500 was moving uh, during this entire downturn, we were still buying into those new buy stocks, and some of those during that time frame really took off, took off. A lot of them really started launching during this rally. So that's why it's so important to be watching for what's the current market trend, and then which what are the strong stocks inside of that trend. So and again, here's your list. Uh, we've had C, CVNA just going nuts um, off of a new buy from um a few days back i think it was right there let me go into that six month time frame that one was it this the whole that never did it was all the way back here was that first buy signal so we're seeing you know even in this new uptrend we're seeing stocks that are really taking off and if they're not in the new buy they're for sure in this muscle stock group so that's one of the advantages again of creating a screener that is also set up for really all new buys or any new buys that are uh, uh, have uh, that are not extreme that that still may have uh, buy or sell signals included let's see if these um, these are not extreme and some are even in you can set it up so that you can get a trigger on some of these that um, go from hold to buy but if they're not and they're not extreme these can also be some to consider these ones that are working these stocks that are working really well so in terms of the allocation the adjustment the portfolio management i call, I call that the wheel strategy where we're adding and re, we're adding into new a new buy every single day and we're we're managing that stock in that new buy with a signal or a stop loss so we're going to sell that stock with a certain stop loss or we're going to continue to let it run or when it reaches a certain level of gain when they, some of these stocks really start to have some really nice profits we want to try and lock those in to some extent without without cutting ourselves short okay that the the biggest advantage of this method is letting these just go just letting these stocks that are working continue to work what we want to do is we want to cut out the losers so again if we go back and look at the history and see some of the losers this, these are some of the biggest losers here they're not that big so we're cutting losers off quickly now what we're starting to build out here on the upside is we're also starting to close out stocks that are showing us nice gains that give a sell signal okay or get or get stopped out so along the way we're holding on to those stocks that are winning the that, that are showing us the absolute best gains we're cutting the losers off quickly we're reallocating back into something every day so that we are continuing to 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 jump on new ideas there may be stocks or new ideas that are still continuing to work it does you know ir whether or not the market is is working with that stock or not most of the time that's going to be the case is we're going to see stocks that do continue to move with the market and so these muscle stocks uh historically watching these stocks for a long time for a lot of years they get when the market turns they get beat up pretty hard so these are because they're they're speculative and sometimes they really do have amazing growth amazing earnings an amazing new idea but not 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 straight up Okay, not straight up and not for forever on a straight up price pattern. So this stock here, you know, CLSK, yes, it's had a big move, tons of volume. Yes, it's working. Yes, it's growing. It's moving higher. But um, how, how long do we let that happen? So 
what we don't want to do is we don't want to let our minds start to come in too much to this trade. What we want to do is just set a, a risk level that we are comfortable with individually and say, I'm okay with setting a stop loss below all of this support and say, okay, if it did retrace all the way back and we were to get a, a big move lower of some kind. And, and like I say, we never, we've seen it before. It's always wise to have a, a trailing stop loss at some point and at some level, just in case you get some crazy weird sell off. Um, on the flip side of that though, we also are protecting our risk. We're creating a lower risk environment by having smaller position sizes. So this is a scenario where every trade is set up at two and a half percent. So worst case scenario, if, if we have a stock and we own two and a half percent of it and it completely gets obliterated and it drops to zero, that's not gonna happen on a stock, but it could, it could drop by 50% or 60 or 80 if it's a biotech or something like that, or it's just a really volatile stock, we could see uh, it drop. So our position size is protecting our overall account too. Worst case scenario, the stock drops to zero, we're down two and a half percent on all of our portfolio. So portfolio management, in my opinion, and risk management is the most important part of trading and investing long-term because that's the hardest part. The hardest part, the, the easiest part is just buying something, right? The hardest part is knowing when to sell and then what to do with that money once you've sold. Do I buy back into the same stock or do I buy something new or do I leave it in cash or do I, you know, that that's the harder part. The easy part is just buying something and if it goes up, great, now what? If it goes down, dang it, now what? So creating a portfolio mechanism so that you're able to diversify, reduce risk, maximize your return on some of these bigger stocks or big winners cutting the losers off at the knees quick so that we don't we don't want to fiddle with them we don't want to mess around with stocks that are not working and we want to know that relatively soon and once they start taking off and working if you've ever studied anything from jesse livermore um, that was one of the methodologies and strategies and this system is built around the, that kind of momentum style trading and that is when you 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 let your winners continue to work and some in some cases add add into the winner it's called pyramiding where you're buying more winners that would be a more aggressive strategy the stocks that are winning are the ones that you keep buying into particularly if it's a stock that maybe has been you know like it's a winner right here let's say UAC this actually really had an odd day yesterday um, and we ended up let's see what it's doing today here on the six month time frame, you can see it had a lot of volatility back down here support that's why that 236 that 236 above that level in our momentum zone is is a it, it's a good tool for us to also create some structure within an uptrend if it is a solid uptrend the vast majority of the time it's not going to break that level and you can see here it's bouncing off of that level but now you know we may want to adjust stop loss and trail that stop loss so that it's like oh boy that thing really can fall off a cliff i want to adjust my stop loss below that 236 sometimes we'll prematurely get stopped out but you know nothing says you can't buy back into it there's you want to be rigid to some extent so that it creates less emotion a less emotional scenario and a consistent scenario for you to be focused on but at the, at the same time you you know yourself and you know where you've made mistakes before or where you start to feel uncomfortable that's um that all that is also important uh, in a portfolio strategy be, to be able to say i just am not comfortable with um you know the, the hardest part of getting comfortable is is having gains and then potentially letting some of those gains go. Okay, that that emotionally tends to be the hardest part for a lot of traders is I have a gain, I want to lock it in versus I've got a stock that's working. I've got a stock that is moving in the right direction. It's continuing to work. And even now with these two bottoming tail bars, it may and it's it's up big today and it's in that uranium sector. There's demand right here on humongous volume. I don't know if that monk, that volume was on the downside or on the recovery side, but 
today is saying it was probably on the recovery side. So you're getting some interest here. So that may be a situation to say this stock has gone from hold to buy if it goes, or it's gone from, it's just currently in a hold. If it moves back to a buy, maybe I add a few more shares into that winner. So I'm increasing the stock at a certain location at a certain time moving from hold back to buy into my winners. So again, there's various uh, audibles, if you want to call them that, in terms of adjusting, making uh, making changes to your portfolio as they're working. The other method that I utilize is just a flat out muscle stock strategy. This one's done pretty well since 2019. And this is essentially just buying, and you can always buy more than this, and have but having larger positions in the muscle stocks that are winning and either selling them when they go back to a hold or selling them if the rank changes so it's a very aggressive it's a little more aggressive strategy for hold, for for capturing the gains on these muscle stocks on the way up in a bull market and not and not uh, not trying or not utilizing that in the downturn so you can have multiple strategies going on at the same time so you're focused on using a muscle stock strategy. Those those are the those are the stocks to pay attention to in uptrends. These are your groups. Okay, these are in my opinion. There's no there's no other reason to focus on anything else because these are the ones that are can uh, they're the best of the current database. Now the database is you know 6,000 strong stocks. These are outperforming everything in that group. Why would I want to mess with anything else? Now that that is a different approach for a lot of traders because they think that they want to buy something off of the bottom well look at you know riot riot has it did have a bottom it was an ugly it was a nice trend on the upside it was down it moved here in fact i had it in the portfolio here on one of these new buys it was either this one or this one and i had a stop loss on it stopped out and never did never did add back into it you could certainly do that so but you're still focused on just a certain group of stocks it makes it easier to whittle down your your you know your your group of stocks that you're focused on because it's here's the list okay what what becomes a little more difficult is okay i can't buy them all or yes you can or you can ease into them utilizing a system because what ends up happening is if you look at the portfolio the new buys now we have if we look at the ranks of our biggest winners okay they're they're all in that upper there's a few that aren't and so you can also use this as a as a as a we as a weeding out process we talked about that once this portfolio and it's not there yet becomes fully invested and it may not sometimes it there's you know this is a it's kind of a market driven auto rebalancing process because you as the market tops out some of these may start to reverse and we may get we may end up selling four or five or six of these which leaves and we're still going to be buying only one a day going into that so it naturally is going to start to raise cash at the right time uh, and but we can also make some changes as we need to but our the these ranks are working pretty well we also have on some of the ones that are not that are down are still good ranked. They're they're highly ranked stock. They just haven't gotten rolling quite yet. TAST was new in the in the um, in the trend, uh, and this may be one where it breaks out, market conditions reverse, and it becomes a pullback. As the breakouts, when market conditions start to reverse, don't work quite as well. Uh, again, lots of variation on how you want to approach it, but in this case, uh, there's a few different ideas for you to be able to focus on. So uh, let's just recap here. Um, in terms of the current new buys, the, some 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 nice looking stocks that are in there. Just remember that you want it to be able to, you want it to have it fit into your overall portfolio strategy. It This is not, you know, just buying one stock and, and hoping that that stock is the one that works. It can work, but if you use a specific model for buying and selling and doing that with this group of stocks and letting it continue to rotate your your risk is going to be lower your performance is you know theoretically going to be better 
there, it's never going to be, you know, we, we never can obviously tell what the future of a strategy is going to be, but even just having those two factors in place, a, a way to make sure our risk is managed. And the way that we manage that risk is position size and an exit strategy. Position size, first and foremost, we don't want to have too big of a holding that could really destroy us. Okay. Now, if you're out there and you're day trading, and if any of you have been doing this for any length of time and, and you're like, holy crap, I just lost six, eight grand on this trade. Um, let me, let me, well, that, that was no fun. Let me go figure out why I, you know, or jump back in or jump back out or jump back in, or you're trading one stock, you're trading an ETF or you're, you know, you're jumping all over the place. That's not a strat. That's not a plan. This is essentially a blueprint process for you to follow and you're, you're not going to get rich overnight. Okay. It just is not going to happen, but you, you will increase your, your probability of growing an account and growing capital. That's what we want. We want to grow our capital and we want to not lose money. Okay. Rule number one is not lose money. And so if we focus on rule number one of not losing money and letting the market do its thing and picking stocks that all have a high probability of success, then the gains will come as we are only focused on risk. As we are focused on the risk side of it or the lack of loss, not losing, the market is going to take care of the winning. Okay? The market is going to do what it does. We, we, can't, we don't have any control over which, which of these stocks go up or down. We're just looking for the right opportunity with the right kind of stocks in the right market environment and then managing the risk as that starts to work. Yes, we've had a really good market right here, but we always get those. There's going to be a market uptrend and a downtrend. There's going to be companies that the next rally probably won't be these stocks. It'll be, there'll be a different group of stocks, but we're always gonna be able to participate in what is working in the current market environment. And so as you're going in and as we go through these, through these sessions, I try to use the software in, in a way that allows for the, the process to follow. T technically, you really don't even need to know what the market is doing to do this method. But if you want to be able to, to manage the risk even more so and talk about probabilities, then we need to know that buy sell ratio, when it looks like this, there's a, there's a high chance that it's not going to last much longer and deal with some kind of a retracement. What does that mean for you? If a retracement or a counter trend in the market is near, what does that mean? What have you experienced in the past when markets are in downturns? How has that hurt? How has that helped? How, is, how have you kicked yourself in the past where you're like, gosh, dang it, I should have sold right here. Or why did I buy more right here? Or um, you know, so creating a scenario where you can st structurally have a methodology, that's really what this entire system is about, is saying, what is the market doing? What's our current trend? How can we, how can we supplement that idea by looking at different markets, by looking at buy-sell ratios? Are these buy-sell ratios insanely high? Yes. Were they insanely low 10 weeks ago? Yes. So we're just playing this rhythm game of these ups and downs, ebbs and flows, different stocks, different market conditions, but trying to do it in a way that allows us to be consistent so that we can keep playing the game. The worst thing is to blow up an account and be done and say, ah, I wish I would have not taken so much risk to try and turn my 10,000 into 50,000. Yes, that can happen, but it happens slower and over time and it happens with compounding. So we want that compounding to start to happen here to where we're managing that, we're smart with it. We have a strategy for how we're approaching it. We have a strategy for why we're buying and when. We have a strategy for how we're selling. We have a strategy for if, this, if the portfolio gets too big, okay, or I shouldn't say portfolio, but the holdings get too big. We could also get to a point where it's like, I, I want to manage this portfolio with 50,000 of my account, and I'm going to manage another 25,000 of my account with this strategy. We don't have to use one strategy for our entire account. We can use multiple strategies and use it for different, different uh, portfolio sizes. 
uh, of our overall account. Hopefully this is clear and not confusing and uh, uh, because part of these discussions we're you know we're picking up uh, new people are, are coming in and and you know some of you have been watching these for years some of you are brand new today so it just depends on where you're at and understanding you can go back into the learning center and review some of the strategies as well i'm actually just building out a whole new training on the muscle wheel methodology that we've just been discussing but i try to i try to essentially give you the the, the vast majority of the content in these presentations because they are it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple to understand and what, what we're trying to do here and how we're going about it and how we're managing it. And you can you can record you these are all recorded. You can rewatch it if it's a little confusing. You can skip through it, fast forward it to only position only portions that you're like, man, I didn't quite understand. I'm gonna rewatch that. And uh, and then take some notes and understand, okay, what does this mean for me? How can I implement this into my trading? Is this too risky? Is this not risky enough? Is this, you know, and it's the, the part of part of investing in trading is dealing with our own expectations of the known and the unknown. We, we all watch YouTube ads and Facebook and Instagram ads. And, you know, everybody's everybody's making a killing right on all of our, it, you know, our, we have to be relatively aggressive in the advertising to show the best parts of the scenario and the best parts of the system. The reality is it is. It, it, it's a hard game. Otherwise, you would, you know, even the best hedge funds in the, on the planet are doing, you know, 30% a year, something like that on a portfolio basis. But they're going to have stock trades just like this. We've got a, you know, a bunch of great winners in there. But in order to not take too much risk, because they can go up as fast, they can, and they can come down just as fast, we have to use that in a portfolio model so that. We're trying again, we're trying to get the best of both worlds. We don't wanna just flat out buy the S&P 500 because we feel like we have got strong enough, a strong enough edge to be able to outperform that. But it takes a little bit of work. It takes a daily effort of you know, 20 minutes, a half hour, something like that to be able to monitor and manage things and be able to adjust where you need to. Uh, okay, let me just summarize here. Uh, so let's be let, let let's be aware of what market conditions are doing here. The the long term outlook on stocks, it does look good on all the price patterns, but we're just extreme. We're just extreme to that upside. If we take a look at some of these here as well, let's look at the Dow, because really all of these, you know, this is this is the Dow Jones. Good grief! Look at that 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 pattern. Okay. We haven't seen a move like that in the Dow in a long, long time. And that's significant. That's a nice rally, but look how far we are into the momentum zone. We're now at all time highs and we could retrace all the way. We could still be in a long-term uptrend, but we could retrace all the way back down to that two, three, six. So when this starts to happen, just realize this is not a sustainable move. It's not going to last forever. We're going to get something like this. We're going to get we're going to get some volatility. It's coming. It's just a matter of when and how much. And so now is the time to start preparing for that by making any kind of adjustments that you might need to in your overall plan. That'll do it for today's update. Thanks everyone for your time and effort and we'll see you next time. Bye now.